Good morning, everyone. Before I start, I'd like to put out a little disclaimer that my name is kind of long and sort of sounds like the beginning of a Hawaiian chant. So uh, here it is. Pumai kai ke aloha tiani nakoa. But we'll just stick to Pumai. That's my name, and I am... Excuse me. Sorry. A, a drama queen. Being a drama queen does pose some problems with this stage. Uh, this minuscule you know, square that they've allotted, it's a bit of confinement, but we'll work with it. Just please bear with me, and we'll see how this goes. So, yeah. Overdramatic, drama queen, and melodramatic all have one word in common, drama. And you know what? I think that this word has a positive connotation to it, and today I'd like to explain why. Today I'd like to uh, share an idea or theory, if you will, that all... Yes, I used one of the most dangerous hasty generalizations. All people have an actor within them. By the way, I'm very confident with this statement. Just, just a side note. Anyhow, this actor is necessary for our survival because by allowing this actor to flourish, we may better understand and comprehend the mysteries uh, within ourselves as individuals. Now, it may seem a bit ironic that I'm saying that we are mysteries to ourselves, but it's true. How many of you can honestly tell me that you know every single aspect of yourself and can explain the whys to those aspects. Anyone want to take a crack? Okay, unfortunately, I don't have all day to sit here or stand here and wait for one of you to try and challenge me, even though I know you don't know everything about yourself. But moving on. So I used to think I knew a good deal about myself until I was about eight years old. Now, I know that seems funny because I was so young, but at that time, I felt I had no control over my life for whatever reason. And being the control hungry person I was, this became extremely displeasing. I began using unhealthy coping mechanisms that were extremely self-destructive. I began to nitpick, I guess you could say, at myself. And about two years later, I found myself being diagnosed with anorexia nervosa and bulimia. I told myself I'd never end up like one of those girls on the TV and in the magazines. Because what they were doing was just crazy. But there I was, learning from the best. Now let's fast forward six years later to now. I'm here and somehow finding the courage to share an idea that I feel is worth spreading with you all. Now before I move on, I'd just like to say that if anyone this, that is listening to this is suffering from something self-destructive, I encourage you to please tell someone because I didn't tell anyone and it took me way too long to get out of the hole I was in and I wish that upon no one. So I'm sorry. This phrase became my best friend. Hurting people and myself, I'm sorry. You must look at a living skeleton every day, I'm sorry. It's not your cooking, it's just I'm not hungry, I'm sorry. It's not that I want to tear my body apart, I just want to fix it, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't love you, I just can't live like this, I'm sorry. I hear you crying at night because you don't know what's going to happen to me, I'm sorry. You have to fight with me right before I go to school saying to stick to the meal plan, honey, you have to, I'm sorry. I lied to you about why I was going to the bathroom. I'm sorry. I told you I ate lunch when I didn't. I'm sorry. But most of all, I'm sorry that none of these apologies will change the fact that I'm going to continue on with what I'm doing to my body. I'm sorry. Now, it wasn't about until the fourth or fifth grade that I became seriously indulged in the art of theater. It was always there in my family. I mean, my cousin did a lot of plays, and then I was quite the character, stopping my whole preschool recital yelling up to my dad on the balcony, hey dad, how'd you get up there? Uh, you know, my mom and aunties always joke about how the acting genes skipped a generation from my grandpa to me and my cousins who are quite the characters. Uh, but like I said, it wasn't until the fourth or fifth grade that I was completely indulged and I uh, took part in my school's SMPA club, I guess you could say. This became one of the very few, if not only positive coping mechanisms that I used through my eating disorder. It was my outlet, my way of escaping reality. I was not that girl they called Annie at school, which was their short and cruel way of calling me anorexic. I wasn't even Pumai for that matter. I was Juliet from Shakespeare's famous play, Romeo and Juliet. I was a Belle from Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Bells. I was Jack Sparrow on <laughs> The Black Pearl. I was Alice falling down a rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland. And I was Galinda singing popular in the hit Broadway musical, uh, Wicked. So I was so much more than Pumai. And through that, I was able to evaluate who I was and am as an individual. 
I began to feel like I was somebody, perhaps even someone important. I was able to realize that my eating disorder was my way of controlling my out of control life. And by being so hard on myself in theater, and in general my life, I was able to realize that I was and I might still be a perfectionist. By addressing these and many other problems, I was able to move on with my life and work really hard towards recovery. Now I'm not saying that recovery from anything is easy because it's not. It took me two relapses and about six years to get to a place where I was generally satisfied with myself. After being in recovery, I was able to realize that my passion was to help people with disorders similar to mine. Now in about a year, I will be off to college. My goal is to be a pre-med major and double major or minor in theater and performing arts. You see, I want to engage both sides of my brain at all times. <laughs> but what am I supposed to do with these degrees? This is one of the most commonly asked questions by thousands of high school and college students. I don't want to waste my time and money for that matter trying to figure this out. Well, I have a dream. I have a dream that people with mental health disorders can find their true selves in this nonstop world of criticism and facades and be okay with who they are as individuals. I have a dream that a spotlight will go on top of a patient with anorexia and they will begin to sing even if they aren't that great because they are proud of themselves. That person will sing of a life where food is just food, no feelings or restrictions or complications attached. This is my dream. Now, helping people with this was not my only passion. If you haven't already noticed, I kind of love theater. So, how can I make a difference in this world of increasing mental health disorders with both of my passions? We have all, I'm sure, heard of art and music therapy and how effective it can be in uh, treatment. But what about theater? I know that theater falls under art in terms of genre, but art, th art therapy doesn't quite focus and keep the limelight, if you will, on performing arts alone. Now here is what I have come up with. I want to create a place, a theater more specifically, where my patients, when I become a psychiatrist with that MD at the end of my name, what, on my medical degree, can go and evaluate themselves through theater. The great thing about this facility is it will incorporate theater, music, and art to create a place where they can become someone else and evaluate themselves like I did. They will synthesize and we will all write skits, slams, monologues, plays, musicals, etc. Because I want them to have a place like I created for myself. I want them to have the chance to look in the mirror and say something with true sincerity that I wouldn't feel comfortable saying two years ago. They will be able to say to themselves, I am something, I am important, I can be better, and I have hope. Thank you.